All right, so today we're going to be talking about palpation, observation, and range of motion assessment in and around the elbow. Uh, before we get into the range of motion assessment, let's do a little bit of a palpatory exam, appreciating where some of the anatomy is and appreciating the various structures. Now, when we think about the elbow, uh, most of the, the muscles in and around the elbow are considered two joint muscles, which means we need to be screening above and below. Uh, on the anterior portion, we have the biceps, and that's going to come down and insert uh, just uh, distal to the elbow. Uh, and so we're going to be looking at the biceps, obviously. Uh, we also have on the posterior aspect our triceps. And then as we move into the forearm, if we have the individual go into wrist flexion, we are going to uh, initially kind of give our focus to the medial side here of the forearm. We can provide a little bit of overpressure, and you can see not only uh, a little bit of, of appearance here of our brachioradialis, but also our common flexors, uh, flexor carpi ulnaris being the main flexor of the wrist. Those are going to insert into our common flexor tendon on this medial aspect of the elbow, and right uh, at or near our medial collateral uh, ligament and our medial epicondyle. If we then turn our attention uh, to a more pronated position and the lateral aspect of the elbow, you can have the individual go into wrist extension, provide slight overpressure there, and you should be able to see those common extensors kind of bulge. They're coming up and inserting just proximal as well above the joint line uh, in and around our lateral collateral ligament and our lateral epicondyle. So here's where we find our uh, common extensor tendon. Now these are important structures because individuals can develop both medial as well as lateral epicondalgia, uh, also referred to as golfer's elbow and tennis elbow. And so those structures are important to assess and to be able to identify. Additionally, uh, while we are going through our range of motion assessment, we need to be able to identify the joint line. Uh, and so recognize that is going to essentially be a hinge joint. So there's pretty much just straight uh, flexion and extension. There's a little bit of play in varus and valgus. We'll talk about that later. But because we don't just have the ulna and the humerus for our hinge joint, but because we also have the radial ulnar joint, we also have this component of pronation and supination. So there's actually going to be uh, four measurements that you take with regards to active range of motion assessment, as well as a fifth measurement known as the carrying a, uh, angle of the elbow. So let's go ahead and get started then with our goniometric range of motion assessment. First thing we need to do is to make sure they have full elbow extension and then have the individual come up and touch their shoulder with their fingers and full elbow flexion. So once we identify that, we can certainly uh, provide overpressure at that point, looking at our end feels as well as if there's any provocation of symptoms. But now we're ready to begin our range of motion assessment. Let's start with flexion. Have the individual come back up uh, and place their hand on the shoulder. Uh, that is their end range actively. Our stationary arm will be in line with the humerus. Axis of rotation is in line with our lateral epicondyle. Our mobile arm is looking for our radial styloid process there. And we can come away with about 144 degrees of elbow flexion. Again, that's an active measurement. Next, we're going to look at elbow extension. All the landmarks are the exact same. And in this case, we have about half a degree of elbow extension. Uh, that's close enough within our range of error to call that zero degrees um, full elbow extension. By the way, it's not uncommon for someone to have slight hypermobility into extension. Up to 10 degrees can be considered uh, normal so long as that is a, a symmetric finding side to side. Additionally, we want to look at carrying angle. Carrying angle is uh, the orientation of the humerus to the forearm, and it's measured with the individual in an extended position. In this case, you're going to bisect uh, essentially a line right between your ulnar and radial styloid process. Uh, your axis of rotation is the antecubital uh, space or fossa, and then you're looking for your uh, bicipital groove and acromion anteriorly as you follow the humerus. And once you have that, you can have the individual relax. 
at about nine and a half degrees. So uh, zero to 10 is normal for gentlemen. Uh, women tend to have a slightly higher carrying angle, uh, upwards of 15 degrees. But again, side to side comparison is helpful. The last two range of motion measurements then that we need to assess are pronation and supination, which gives us a clue of our radial ulnar joint. Recognize that in a supinated position, the ulna and the radius lie in parallel with each other. As an individual goes into pronation, they then cross. And so the radius is still lateral on our more proximal orientation, but then it's going to cross to the medial side as we pronate. So for this, I find it helpful to bend our pillow back, have the individual in a neutral position of 90 degrees. We know from our screen that they already have supination and pronation, so we don't really need to worry about measuring from neutral. However, it is helpful to give them a pen as that is where you're gonna line up your uh, mobile arm of your goniometer. So we're gonna have the individual go into pronation first. Your axis of rotation is aligned that's really imaginary, but goes in and all the way through the forearm. Your stationary arm is straight vertical, and your mobile arm aligns with the pen. So in this case, we have 79 degrees of active uh, left pronation. Now we're going to ask the individual to go into supination, and everything stays the same in terms of landmarks. Vertical axis rotation through the forearm, and mobile is in line with the pen. And that gives us a measurement of 87 degrees of active left supination. Again, you can also provide overpressure while they're in this position. Pronation, overpressure. Uh, I find uh, using the styloid processes as a grip source is helpful because it gives me something more firm to grab hold of rather than really kind of creating a sheer force across the skin. Uh, you can also look at those measurements passively as well. So uh, start with a palpation assessment and observation. Move into your range of motion assessment, utilizing goniometric assessment, and let me know if there's any questions.